Hey everyone, welcome back. This episode, I'm going to show you how I made this pillar piece, this area around the rear screen, get that welded in, and this upper tail light bucket, and get that welded in. So let's get to it. Okay, so just laid out a rough template for this quarter and the vent area, which is this. So I'll probably end up doing this piece separately because it's pretty intricate up in there. And I'll just make this outer here. There is an overlap here and these pieces spot internally. But I really don't think I'm going to unpick this to get to that area for no reason. So I'm probably just going to put a fake join here and actually join this to the quarter skin. And I'll just run like a little bead line along there. It's covered by a chrome trim anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But see how it goes, eh? I'll probably have to make some uh, pull max tooling for this, like double lip here. I'm going to see how I go here. I'm probably only going to go to the first fold on there and then I'm going to make some tooling up and have a bit of a play around and see if I can get that shape made separately as one piece. Save me cutting the two new sheets that I got. I'm just going to use the bonnet skin file from a few episodes ago. It's already got a fair bit of shape in it and I've overshaped it anyway so as a trial run I'm just going to use this and I'll see how I go. I might try and add this center section in but it's a lot of stretching in which is going to affect this outer area so I'd rather just do it in two piece that way this area is much more manageable for me. I'll just weld this section in. But we'll see how we go. So I've just laid it over the top and just trimming it down to suit on my little hydraulic converted guillotine that I made. So it's already got a bit of shape in it. I'm just going to tip that lower flange in it now just so I can actually hold it up against the car because it's obviously going to foul unless I tip that first. So just bead roller on my tape line and that's tipped it over now so that Got a flange on there now to imitate that join and then I can continue stretch this down a touch more but that's not going to let me I've got to shrink this edge over it's just not going to let me go there this edge here on the flange also needs to be stretched to let it wrap around my bloody flash why is it not on okay flash is now working so you can see that imitates that. This wants to go down more. And same with this. It wants to come around to meet. So I've got to stretch this and stretch this down before shrinking this corner to really let it wrap around the corner. So just a few passes in the wheel has brought this over. But this side's saying, hey, I'm not coming down because the roof tape is down there. You need to shrink me. So I put this in a thumbnail dies in the pull max and shrink this area here to start rolling it downwards. So thumbnail dies are in. Set it to this mode, which is the shortest, fastest stroke. I'll try and record a bit, but it's going to be noisy because my um, the bushing here actually needs to be changed on the coupling. But I'll try to show you what it actually does. just how much that's pulling it over just with a few passes on there so much much faster than doing it by hand okay so I just did four passes on that and you can already see so much closer already just with a little bit of force it wants to kick this edge out but it's um much closer to the shape so I'll do a few more and then planish it better to over shrink it really because once you try to plunge it back out you lose a bit of shape so I've always found the perfect way is to overdo it a little so it's uh, looking pretty ugly but it seems to be going over I hope it's going the right way <laughs> not really sure but yeah uh, soon find out okay with a combination of the 36 radius in the little hammer and the thumbnail dies it's really starting to come right over now so a little bit more 
so fitting pretty decently. Now got the top to come right over. Just um, just got to mark this edge which I have, and uh, tip that edge over. Just using this soft lower wheel, this upper. Trying to uh, find a happy medium between all three cars of what it actually fits like, and fitting snug for the radius of the pillar here, roof's good, and tight along the back. Now, once you get it on this car, the radius for the pillar is different. So we've opened up 5mm, still tied across the back, and then this one, different again. So, the radius is off the whole way at the top, bottom's sort of close and the back's tight so the back radius is fine but geez I understand they were handmade but I thought they'd be closer than this it's so different okay so I've got it sitting where I want it now describe this line for this edge I'm going to see if I can tip the first fold over this piece I'll just do on its own so I've uh, resorted to screws because I've ran out of Clecos. I've got all the Clecos left on my 1000 dash so it's now screws to take the place. So I just took the quarter off and ran this area here and this is the very top through the wheel. Much much nicer. I was definitely shitting my pants putting it through the wheel. I thought it would really ruin it but it seems to have really helped it. So I'm just going to change the die to get this area and hopefully comes up nice. A uh, scary moment for me when you spend so long making a panel and then you put it in the wheel and most things I put in the wheel turn to shit so <laughs> this is good. I've uh, scrubbed this line here to do the door edge. So I think I'm gonna do that last I think because if I tip that it will just clash with the wheel and I won't be able to wheel this area here so I think I'll just do the, the edge last once I know the panel is fitting mint, I'm happy with it. I've got to shrink this edge down just around the tail light section just a little bit. But I don't know if I'm going to make this section or if I'm going to join to it. I think I may as well just make it, then I've got a full quarter from here on and I can just unpick that whole thing. Okay, so this is going to fit nice now. I'm going to probably make this center section and then get that all sorted so it's ready to um, weld into itself and I don't know I think I'll weld that to the quarter before I do this piece um, not quite sure I might just tack it just so I know I can take it off if I want um, I'm gonna leave this dog leg disconnected until very last I feel like uh, it's only like a little 100 mil weld I'll just leave that save complicating it uh, more shit to hang on to when I'm trying to wheel it so yeah, I'm just going to pull everything back off again, change the die, like I said, in the wheel and try and wheel these areas for these joins and over here, just to bring them all up. Well, there's all my puzzle pieces made, so I've got to tig it all together now. What a nightmare of a piece. Okay, so I've got most areas. I just want to fill little few craters that are here and just put a bit more on the corner so I can grind it off. But other than that, fitting pretty good. Just, yeah, little craters that I just want to fill just so it's perfect. Okay, so all the craters are filled in it now. Just going to give it another grind, get rid of all those and planish it up. Hopefully it comes out good. Okay, so welded and planished. Just a little test bit. Sweet. Cool, so I've got it sitting back on now. It's got a few little lows chase up and a bit of scarring from the uh, thumbnail dies pulling the roof over so it's got a bit to planish up now and uh, should be good got to add this little return now 
So I've made this section of the B pillar and I've removed this actual join here between the quarter and the pillar because it's just going to be prone to rust out. So I just put a B roll on there so it looks like there's a join there and it gets covered by a chrome trim anyway but it's rather eliminate problems that will arise again. I was going to make this section here to about here for the new uh, quarter that I've made and then I'll join it onto the quarter. That way I can get access when I put the quarter on and can planish that join up easily. So I've got my template, what I need on there. Cut it out rough. I've marked my first fold just lightly and now I've got my second one to do so I'm going to tip that on now. Soft lower, sharp upper tip wheel and I'll just run this through probably two passes. I don't want to go uh, much definition. I just want to just, just get them all faintly on there before I progressively turn them all over where they need to be. Okay, so both of those lines are faintly tipped. So this line is this and this second one here is this one. So now I've just got to do this little step that fades off into nothing. Fades off into this line. So I'll transfer these lines that need to be there just by using a razor blade and doing little cuts. And that way when I rip the paper off, I'll just retrace it accurately. Remove the paper, you can just faintly see the little scratches. And now I'll just retrace those with a pen. This is just a one-time one use scrap template. If I was going to keep it, I would actually use it for both sides, but I'll just make another one for the opposite side. Another way you can do it is you have your reference mark lined up on the outside of your template, and then you can just start cutting along those and then tracing it on and cutting each piece as you go. Flip it over for the opposite side, uh, opposite direction fold, I mean, and you can just you can mark it that way instead of using the razor blade but it destroys your template at, at the end of it so it's a sort of a choose your poison approach one way is much easier to mark out but it destroys your template the other way it takes a little bit more finicky work to mark it out but you get to keep the template at the end of the day with something easy like this i know it's 11 mil for the step so i can just mark 11 mil the whole way along and then 160 before it starts to fade off into nothing so at least I know I just stop, start ramping the pressure off of the bead roller as I get near this point and then it's got to be nothing by the time it gets to here. Okay, so it's just light definition tipped in there and then fade it off at my mark. So we've got most of them marked out faintly and now we have to do this one which fades off to the same point of 165 but it's in the opposite direction. So we mark it on the other side, it'll come from here to there. Okay, so that's all the lines faintly put in there. So I've got to just go, go back to the bead roller now and just do more passes on each of them to really get them to the desired angle and depth. So as you keep going with your passes to tip these edges right over, it's going to show you what it needs. So it's saying there's too much material here, please shrink me. So I take it over to the kick shrinker, just give this edge a few little squeezes evenly and it'll help pull it around for you. So I need to tip this actually up here where I've marked before I can go in it tells me it needs to come forward more but I can't go forward because I've not tipped it up yet so get that tipped and the easy way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to slit along each fold so it will allow me to roll the piece over otherwise this area won't like folding because it's just too strong having a bead rolled the whole way along there it's just too strong it won't let it fold over Okay, so it's slit, so I can go fold, fold, trim that edge off, and then trim this where it needs to be. Okay, so they're tapped up, just going to show this needs to come up until it meets this angle. And you're obviously just going to have to do little infill pieces here and there, but you'll probably be able to get that with the upper anyway, so you'll probably end up joining around that area anyway, so maybe even joining right on the corner, depending on how long you make the next piece. Sometimes just a bit of a strategical nightmare, you've got to choose where you want your join that's going to be the easiest and uh, fastest spot for you. Okay, so we're fitting pretty good everywhere. It's laying down. Just got to do this little ski jump that's here. Hard, hard to see on the black car. Probably easier to see on this one. It's got a little kick. So uh, just got to just work this area up a little bit just to give it that shape. But coming along. So I'll just give it some little crow pecks just to help it uh, start forming that shape in and if it needs it, if it doesn't come up good by hand, I'll chuck it 
I'll select the radius die and I'll chuck it in the machine just to smooth and blend that area in. So I discovered the roof actually wasn't attached down here so I've actually had to space it out to try and pull the pillar out. The pillar was in 15mm so I was wondering why I couldn't read 30 mil from here to here on the other same as the other cars the piece fit the other cars and then i realized the whole quarter is literally torn off torn down the wheel tub as well so it might actually need to come up might have to put a tremor on the car just give it a check over so just to make sure it's in the right spot because the other car's got a damaged uh, quarter panel i'm just going to join them at the bottom here while it's on another car that way i know it's all in the right spot because uh, yeah that car is just really sad in that area it must be down and in so at least I know if I get all these corners in the right spot up here it'll put that where I need it to be okay so sitting all in place now got it joined just to be sure check it on this one making sure I'm getting a happy medium okay so I'm gonna try and make this tail light bucket now and next up after the taillight bucket is the boot lip to weld to the top of the quarter. So I'm going to try and do it at about this length, wrap around that whole area. Um, then I'm going to make this inner door piece and weld that to the pillar. And then after I have this dog leg joined to the quarter and the upper pillar and rear windscreen area joined to the pillar as all one piece, I'll pull it off and then make the inner, start doing the inner, redo the sill piece and just work my way back around to the front because the rear is still caved in and the rotisserie is sort of in the way to make this piece anyway so I'll work my way back around before I can pull this area out and yeah as I work my way back to the front do this pillar piece uh, do the uh, around the front windscreen and then do this area here you could just about leave this but it's pitted and the join on it's pretty sad so may as well just remake it and then that's half the car made after i make this little piece for the headlight and join all this uh, nose cone together that's literally half the car so that's that'll be a pretty big achievement for me So I just faintly tip the uh, tail light bucket into it and I've just turned the bottom flange in and now I can start uh, shrinking around the edges just so I don't have to mark it again I can just uh, I can reference off that line now so just using the thumbnails to shrink the drawn on areas where I uh, where the template showed it needed to be shrunk and this is why I just faintly tip the uh, outline on there so it doesn't rub the texture marks off just pain in the ass remarking things when you rub it off so I just faintly tip it on there that's why I know it's there and I can just continue straight off that later so shrink this area a touch more and then I got to get the mallet and stretch this area down so just roughing this area out here with the mallet and the sandbag and then I'm going to go back over to the machine give that corner more of a shrink and just keep gradually bumping it down until it's the desired shape the sandbags on the ground here because I was playing around with the other side of the nose cone on Sunday and I think before I wrap it over too far it'll be too tall to fit in the bead roller so I might go tip this flange for the um, tail up bucket now so this is why I'm not putting too much shape into it because if I tip that around too far it'll clash on the machine I won't be able to do this tail light bucket so this is just the uh, problems that you encounter beforehand in your life and now you strategically uh, avoid them in the future okay so back to the bench just to trim the perimeter out for my flange and the reason I don't trim that out first is because if you trim that out first and then you're trying to hit this area it's not strong and it'll just buckle in and it'll just give you a massive headache so it's best just to leave that area there for strength so you can roughly shape the panel in where you want get it started otherwise you're just in for a world of pain I've been there before and thought you know what I'll try and do this area first and then it just just becomes a massive massive nightmare and it's just uh, multiple laps 
with the tipping die just get it um, gradually bent over more and more and get it to about the 45 degree point and then I'll just start doing it by hand after that otherwise just clashing into everything it just makes more of a mess and as you're using the mallet just to pull it all around where you want it just keep an eye on your shape it'll want to twist and carry on so yeah just routinely keep checking it after a few probably 15 seconds of mallet work just pull it back up to the car and check otherwise it'll get away on you pretty easily and that's no good when you get closer to adding the uh, flatter section that's closer to the flange you can just choose the steak dolly and plop that in the holder and then tap it around that so yeah just keep alternating between forming it over the dolly and the sandbag just to rough it out where it needs to be so as you gradually bump it around there the sheet will tell you what it needs it's bunching up in that area so it just means it wants to be shrunk so you've got to take some material out of that corner and it will let it pull around. So once I've got this area sort of semi-roughed out, I can um, move, move along the panel. It sort of locks it into the corner as well, stops it from uh, walking away on you. And this is just normal hammer, it's my old faithful, and um, just a dolly with a sandbag so far, no machine work besides the thumbnail shrinks, and you could easily just do those with this, the tucking tool and just manually shrink that area. Just use the thumbnails because I've got it, why not make things 200% faster? So there's a lot of stretch that's got to happen in this area. So back to the sandbag. Just really stretch all that area right down. Try and uh, balance the stretching out. So once you really stretch this area, this corner wants to lift up on you on all the perimeter. So then you go back around and stretch the perimeter out gradually. It's just a time consuming process, but that's how it's done. Now sat back on the car, we can see this area is touching. The edges are lifting up. So we know we still got to pull this area down a ton. And to tip the uh, flange over by hand, instead of using hammer and dollies, I just use this little uh, stake holder that I made for the Jonesway tool. It's like a little quick release chisel to use by hand. And I decided I made a little holder for all the dies because they're such good shapes. And then I can just put them into the stake holder and use the uh, use the dies in reverse and actually hit the piece over the top of them instead of having to hold the hammer and dolly And I'll switch over to a high crown hammer For most of this work because if you use this hammer and you haven't clearance the corners off It'll just smash into here and leave bad marks on there and scar it right up And before I used something like this uh, just using the corner of the bench the end of the rotisserie anything anything was a dolly before that so, uh, just gotta make life easier for yourself sometimes. So it's getting closer now, it's meeting at the very bottoms, but the top still has a long way to go. So more and more and more stretch on those areas. But oh, coming along. Now for the flange, it has to return in so sharp and also be at that level. I've really got to stretch that area out and then run it again with the bead roller to tip the flange. So basically I've got to smash that area just until it's level with this height so it's all at the same plane and then I can tip that flange up to bring it at the same level as this. Okay so now that I'm confident this plane is the same as this I can go back to the bead roller and tip that flange on. So I tip the flange back on there, now it's telling me I've got too much material, I've got to shrink that area, and I'm assuming I've got to shrink this corner as well. So yeah, we're way off. So give that little flange a shrink to pull it back in the right shape. Now for that, just over to kick shrinker, nice and easy. So yeah, trimming the panel down released a lot of this corner, and now I think I'm just going to trim it down because there's no point trying to stretch this all the way down 
to meet this when this panel is going to be that profile the whole way and I can just pull the panel up so much easier to shape that one up towards this than it is to bring this panel down because it's already got so much stretch from being at this face trying to come down 100 mil it's a massive battle for nothing okay so after my dummy spit and I try and salvage it I drove over the uh, top with the die on the little hammer trying to plenish so yeah munched it pretty good idiot so now I'll just remake the top section which is annoying too because this was the hardest part so starting again I'm gonna try and make this top half again and not run it over at the end after hours of bashing okay so after my little tantrum I fixed this area here just welded in a whole new section because um, yeah, I drove over it with the dies, so I crunched the hell out of it. it really pissed me off. But it's salvaged, kept the lower half, just uh, welded the little splits in the very corners. But uh, yeah, it's replaced that section now, so hopefully I can just sit the quarter on top of it now. I can't sharpen up this edge too much, otherwise I won't be able to actually put it in. So I'm ready to uh, sit it on and trim all the perimeter off. So after trimming the quarter back a little bit, it's telling me that it needs to be shrunk right on this edge. It's just not wanting to go in. So I couldn't see that before because I had such a large overhang. So I'm going to try and wrestle mania this quarter into the machine and give it a little thumbnail shrink just in this area. See how we go. Okay, so I gave that edge a shrink where it needed and uh, trimmed the piece down the suit. So now we're lining up good. So hopefully you get a few tic tacs on that and then pull it off, punish it down where it needs to go and um, hopefully we're on the right, right track here. I'd really like to get this taillight section joined to the quarter and this pillar and rear windscreen piece joined to the quarter. I'd really like to get all that tied together and I'm undecided where I'll join the dog leg here as part of the whole quarter because it's normally got to join here on the sills. I was thinking of making the sill and lower quarters one piece and then doing a join here but I'll see I'll soon find out be really cool to have the quarter done in one piece and sort of like a milestone achievement for me okay so it's welded together now we just pretty much started at the bottom and pulled the quarter around over it to stop it like bunching up anywhere so now it's got to take it off and just punish it punish the weld back up it's a bit low and uh, continue on. So just back on the bench now, just to finish doing the welds along here. Just need to be dressed up a little bit before I could finish welding it. So just chasing this bottom area here, just tapping it all out. And that's what the inside looks like so far. Quilted blanket. Okay, so that'll do for the time being. There's obviously a lot of Clico holes and little craters to fill just here and there. But I won't go too crazy on it just yet because I've still got to weld all this area when I weld them together and I've got to get rid of all these holes. So I can access that area which is great. I can get into all there. So I won't go too crazy on it just yet. Okay so I'm going to do the dog leg disjoint to the pillar and rear windscreen piece. And then the boot lip is going to be separate so that'll be a separate piece later on. But coming together now. So I've scrubbed my line and the pillar and rear window piece, so I'll give that a trim now and then get it welded on. So the joint's coming up pretty good. A few little spots where there were screw holes and stuff that are low, but it might come up alright. Okay, so just punishing up this and this joint along here to link them both together. Okay, so just zap those together. Now I'm going to pull it off to punish it. So it's going to punish this weld up now. So a tricky little area because it's such a little skate ramp. I knew once I welded this it was going to shrink and pull upwards. So I'm just using combination of the appropriate dolly for up top and my old faithful. And then just a high crown with the flat bottom if I get it too high. Just to stretch that weld right back out so it really dips in and flows nice. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the uh, blend of the join. It's just starting to ramp up a little bit here. So I'm going to chuck it back on the car and then see what this area needs. So I've got to remove it again just to bump up a few little lows here and just punish this blend up a touch more 
while I have it off, I'm going to turn the door edge and then trim the boot edge back. I haven't made the uh, window surround or the door jam piece because I undecided what my approach is going to be. I do have a whole roof cut, so it's just yeah, me choosing if I just want to make a section here and make the door jam and then make the roof myself and keep the roof cut instead of ruining it. But the uh, pillars are pretty sad all around, so I'll uh, decide that in the future, not right now. As my only issue with replacing the roof cut is I don't want to do a cut and shut of the inner pillars. I'd rather do little patch repairs on them rather than cut the whole roof off for no reason. So I feel it's wasteful to leave these inner structures and just replace the outer skin with that one, like unpicking it. It's very wasteful. So I'm thinking it's just better for me just to make the roof skin, keep these pillars and just repair the roof that's actually on it. Especially when the condition of the metal is probably just about the same. I can't imagine it being too much better. Just gonna go through and just mark all the little areas just that I know need to go down while it's off because the shape does change a little bit once you start stretching that down. It wants to splay upwards. So I know I've got to give these areas a little extra stretch. Same as the back here, this area's got to come down slightly. So I might just give that a bit of stretch down in those areas. Okay, so just knocking this area down, see how it's wanting to splay up. I've really got to stretch this down, so that involves pushing everything over to get that swoop to stay and also stay down. So, a little tricky to hold it on the bench, I've just got it clamped in one leg and just got cardboard so I don't high spot the hell out of it, but yeah, tricky panel to hold, so nervous that it doesn't slip off and damage it. So still on this blend at the moment, it is coming up pretty good, just needs a touch more stretch just in this area here just to really let it flow properly and then yeah you can still see all my little ripples from the mallet so it's got to smooth all those out to get this transition nice, slowly coming along. I don't know how I'm going to go about getting this area in the bead roller it's such a large panel to hold i might have to get my wife to come and hold that end of it it's just a bit of a wrestlemania danger zone if i try and do it myself oh well i'm just going to risk it i can almost pretty much comfortably hold it one-handed so i'll just uh hope for the best here Okay, so that wasn't as bad as I thought. Just needs to be uh, sharpened up now. I'm gonna shrink this edge here where it's obviously wrapping around. Needs less material here. And I need to stretch this edge here as it rolls the opposite way. So I won't finalize the edge until it's pretty much getting fitted because there's sort of no point dicking around here at the moment. I'll just leave it as is. Otherwise, it's just gonna make it harder to sit it on and off. And the panel's taller than you and you've got to put it in the little kick shrinker. Nearly hitting the roof. Okay, so sat back on, it's, got, it's telling me what needs to happen here. Got to stretch these two areas to let it really splay inwards to get the body line to meet again. And I've got to shrink this edge here, it's just bunching up because it's too much material. So I've still got these imperfections. And you can see, if you can see through down that hole, but the boot is right there. So that's why I left those, I didn't weld those up. I just wanted to check the height, make sure I was actually at the right level weld those up last so I've just marked the uh, perimeter of the boot lip now I'm just going to trim that off okay so it's got the edges of the body line that was added welded up so that I can play with the edge a bit more and it doesn't keep splitting because it obviously wasn't welded there so I just wanted to open up and just went through and just did a little few crater fills in a few spots just because while I was there if it's got to come off again anyway Got to come off to trim this boot lip, so I'll cut that down now. And just before I take it off, I'll just get the texture and just mark what areas need to come down a smidge while it's in its uh, actual position. Because once you put it on the bench, it sort of springs back a little bit and it's hard to see where it is. So it's good to mark them all here, that way you know you can do them on the bench. So 
So it just gave this join just to hit with 80 on the grinder just to take off a little bit extra material that was there. So I'm ready to just keep punishing this area now and see how good I can get it. So the best part about not sanding it is it's reflective and you can see exactly what's going on. You can see how ripply it is there. So just got to punish this area to blend that area nice and smooth. So just run the file over every other joint and there's just like microscopic little lows that would be filled with primer. But I'm just going to keep trying to chase them here and there. Same as on this area, like they're really small. But um, I really just want to improve my work. So before this gets welded on completely, I'm just going to keep planishing and planishing to get it as best as I can. All in all, really happy with how it's progressing along. It's a little few tidy ups here and there on all the joins and stuff, but it's um, coming along pretty well. Just got to uh, go down a touch with this edge to meet the boot lip. And just yeah, little imperfections and chase little craters and stuff as I go along. So just spraying some oil on the panel now just so I can get it a bit more reflective so I can see what's going on a bit better. So from here I think I'm going to make this top section of the guard here and do this last little piece of the nose cone half because I've just uh, continued on of the nose cone piece for the other side so I want to try and get that made on a car that's not bent and then uh, pull this car out to suit and I also started playing around with the little louver dies on the machine just to replicate this area that's completely missing just had to go on some uh, scrap I had laying around and uh, seems pretty possible so can definitely remake that headlight inner the factory join is here on the car originally but that area was damaged so there's no point in me cutting it back just to join there I might as well just make this whole piece and um, try and join it on up there that way I've got access under this cowl to do a join across here uh, there's no real point doing any of the inner pillars or inner sill structures just yet. I've got to remake the sills again um, until I get this car on the other floor pen. So I kind of want to just work my way along the side, do this little piece here, try and do the front screen piece, just tie like whole corners together. So I've just got them in bulk and then I can move on to the next section because uh, this side's probably actually worse it's got a lot more damage on here it's had uh, crowbar damage from them prying the doors and stuff open so it's, it's pretty mangled on this side the a pillars rotted out as well like corner of the dash it's it's uh, pretty sad and it's obviously been stoved in here as well so I've got to pull all that damage out before I can make this rear valance area so I think I'm going to wrap things up here people always ask about times of what times things take it was surprisingly a whole day in this pillar piece there's so much shape there that's um, deceiving to see on camera and yeah it took a whole lot of effort whereas something like this back windscreen piece only took a few hours so it's deceiving on what actually will take you a long time uh, tail light bucket is a whole day making that yes because i fucked it up as well i got 90 percent done then i drove over this area when i was on the machine so i had to remake this so i think there's another three or three and a half days so it was a day a day and a day to make and weld that in and weld the dog leg on at the door edge and planish the rest of the panel to the current state that it is it's crazy that once the bar's on you barely see any of that area down in there and there's a, a lot of shape in this area as well so it's crazy that a lot gets hidden once the bar goes on. So it's been a while since I posted on the Cosmo. I've just been busy doing other cars. Did like a rear beaver and taillight sections for this 1200 coupe. Um, a tunnel. Tunnel and firewall to suit a uh, standard heater box and console. Played around with my 1000. Made like a custom dash. 
for that as well. I'll be a video coming on this car, what I've actually done to it, the, the rebuild of the rebuild. But uh, yeah, been busy working on other cars, so I haven't really been playing with the Cosmo. But this week I decided to jump back on it.